What is going on, guys? And today, I'm going to be doing a mock draft. It's going to be one round. It's going to have trades. And it's going to be what I think is going to happen. Obviously, a little bit of opinion of who I like. But uh, without further ado, let's get into the draft. With the first pick in the NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select... Aiden Hutchinson, Edge, Michigan. Now, this should come as no surprise, considering he's the best player on most people's boards, and he's who most people have the Jaguars taking. I mean, he has a great blend of speed and power. He's able to transition his speed to power, and, you know, he had great production in college. He's pretty refined. He's a good run defender. He's just a very complete prospect, and, you know, he has a very high floor, but he also has a lot of potential. And, you know, the only person you ever see mocked here that's not him is Trayvon Walker. And for me, Trayvon Walker is too big of a risk to take first when you have someone like Aiden. I think they have similar potential, pretty much the same, but Trayvon Walker could easily fail. I mean, there's totally a chance that happens. So I am going to have the Jaguars taking Aiden Hutchinson here. I, you know, I just think it makes sense, right? I think he's the better player. I think the Trayvon Walker hype is definitely a little too much and... I don't think he's going to go first overall. I think it's going to be Aiden Hutchinson, Edge, Michigan. Next up, I have the Lions taking Kayvon Thibodeau, Edge out of Oregon. Now, you might be surprised as he's been trending downward recently, but on the actual draft day, don't be surprised. He is so much potential and is one of the better athletes in this class. His character concerns have definitely gotten overblown, and he also has the production to back it up. When you compare him to someone like Trayvon Walker, they're, they're both have very high ceilings, and they both have some technique concerns, but Kayvon Thibodeau is definitely the better person when it comes to production, as well as playtime. They are both amazing athletes, but at the end of the day, I'm going to take the guy who's similar, but just has way better stats. And I know the Lions are going to take an edge rusher, because while they have a lot of positions of need, they released their DN Trey Flowers, who was a big cap hit, but he was one of the only really good players on their team. And it just makes sense that they're going to replace him. And I think the guy they're going to replace him with is probably maybe the guy with the highest upside in this draft, maybe besides Trayvon Walker, and a guy with more production, and that guy is Kayvon Thibodeau. Next up, I have the Texans taking Evan Neal, tackle out of Alabama. They need pretty much every position except quarterback for now because Davis Mills is a solution for now. And I think Evan Neal might be the best player available at a position of need. And you may say, well, Laramie Tunsil, that was my thought at first. But I'm thinking they either look to trade him or they just have a great tackle crew. Um, and they can help Davis Mills develop if he is their guy moving forward with two tackles like that. And they can have Evan Neal get to not have to worry as much starting at right tackle. He played um, at different spots on the line throughout his career at Alabama. So they're not going to put all the pressure on, on him right away. He has a ton of upside as a tackle, but he also has very good technique coming from Alabama. Alabama. You know, he's a winner. He is a huge guy. He is 6'7". He is massive. And, you know, I think you combine everything and it just makes sense. Also, there's just no way three edges are going to be taken in a row at the start of the draft. Just doesn't work like that. Um, he, This is between Evan Neal and Sauce for me. And I just went with Evan Neal. Uh, yeah. Next, I have the Jets taking Sauce Gardner, cornerback out of Cincinnati. Now, the Jets need a few positions, mainly wide receiver, cornerback, and edge. And for me, it's going to be about a few things here taking Sauce Gardner. I think he's the best player available. I think he's got a pretty high floor, but he's also got a very high ceiling. He is pretty big for a corner, yet he was able to play very well. Like, there didn't seem like there were any concerns. He was able to play without any safety help over the top for a majority of the time, and he was very effective. Teams just didn't throw his way because they were so scared of him. I think he's easily the best cornerback in this class and definitely one of the best players. The Jets need a player here, and I think it's just too early to take any of the wide receivers. I don't think any of them are worth a top five pick. However, I think Sauce is totally worth the fourth overall pick. So that's who I have the Jets take. Here at five, I have the Giants taking Ikim Ikiakwanu, tackle out of North Carolina State at five. Personally, I think he's an absolute brawler in the run game. And while he does have some work to do in the pass game, you can't really teach the aggression he plays with when in the run game. He has a, definitely a lot of potential, but a great thing about him is that if he ends up not being a good tackle, which there is a perfectly solid chance that happens, he will be a great guard. 
which actually makes him pretty safe, even though he's not very polished, which is something you don't see with a lot of players. His combination of upside combined with um, position versatility makes him a great pick here. Also, the Giants went all in on Daniel Jones this year. They said, you know, we'll give him one more year. He hasn't really had a fair shot. They brought in Brian Dable, who helped transform Josh Allen, who used to be a more running quarterback, into a better all-around quarterback and getting a really good tackle who could start as guard who could really play anywhere um or along the offensive line having someone like that an absolute beast to help pave the way for Daniel Jones I think will definitely show if he's the quarterback of the future and even if he's not Icky will be there to help whoever the next guy is I just think this is a slam dunk pick for the Giants and there's no other pick that will happen if he at six makes though it to I have the here. Panthers going with a Pittsburgh Panther QB in Kenny Pickett this may be a little bit of a surprise to you but after I explain I don't think it will I think it'll make perfect sense the Panthers starting QB is Sam Darnold right now enough said but I'll continue they could some people have them taking someone like Moe Willis but he will not be ready to start for at least a year Kenny Pickett can play right away and he'll be solid he's he's a playmaker as you see with this fake slide you know he does stuff like this and he has this kind of joe burrow energy you know with the small hands and you know just seems like he really wants to win i don't know that's just the sense i get from him but he's ready to play i'm not saying he is joe burrow he's gonna be joe burrow i'm just saying i feel like he you know has a similar uh way that he plays sometimes but anyway um you know they're not going in with sam darnold as starting qb he was the worst qb by far among non-rookies last year and with all that talent on defense and guys like dj moore robbie anderson and cmc they, they just can't do it i mean it could definitely be possible they take an offensive lineman i think if if evan neal fell they would definitely take him but in this mock, I, I don't think Evan Neal is going to fall that far. And I just think Kenny Pickett makes sense to be their quarterback of the future. And if he doesn't work out, we'll probably pick high somewhat soon. But I, I think he will. And, I you know, I don't think he's going to be the best quarterback in the league. But I also don't think he's going to be the worst quarterback in the league. With their second pick, I have the Giants finally taking Trayvon Walker edge out of Georgia. Now, Trayvon Walker has a ton of potential. However, his potential to be a bust because of his not having a lot of production in college is also there. So I, I feel very comfortable taking him outside of the top five to a team like the Giants. They need some guys to be, you know, really impactful. And on defense, they really need an edge rusher. They don't really have a lot of guys. Interior, they have Dexter Lawrence. He's been okay. But on the edge, they don't really have anyone that's like a good edge rusher. And I think Trayvon Walker goes in and maybe it takes him a year. Maybe he never gets good. But to start off, he's got great. He's great at stopping the run, and if he manages to hit his peak, he will be amazing. I mean, you talk about one of the best athletes probably at the combine, one of the best athletes at edge we've ever seen. Um, so I think the Giants, I just think it's a no-brainer here. Position to need, a uh, ton of upside, probably best player available. And, yep, Giants taking Trayvon Walker at pick seven. At eight, I have the Falcons going with what could be a surprise to some people with Jermaine Johnson edge instead of someone like Garrett Wilson or even a quarterback. But let me explain, okay? For me, it was between Garrett Wilson and then the aforementioned Jermaine Johnson, who I ended up going with. And the reason is when you look at the jet depth chart, okay? Both positions are atrocious. Like, none of these guys should really be NFL starters. But what it came down to for me was that TJ Watt, with two less games, had like three and a half more sacks than the entire Falcons team. Like an extra, he had like an extra half a sack a game than them. And if you're getting almost half a sack less than one player on another team, you just do not, you have to draft an edge high. Like it's unacceptable, okay? They're not competing this year. They don't care about Marcus Mariota, like getting good supporting cast. They're just going to use Cordo Patterson and, you know, Mike Davis a little bit. And they're just going to run it and just try to build their defense with AJ Terrell. Um, and then here, Jermaine Johnson. I, I, they just, they cannot get less sacks than a player, okay? This is, I see a ton of people saying Garrett Wilson. It's wrong. You're wrong. And if they take Garrett Wilson, they're wrong, okay? At pick nine, I have the Seahawks going with Charles Cross, tackle out of Mississippi State. He might be the best pass blocker in this class. His ability to mirror is unmatched. And in the run game, you know, he's not the best. He's not a mauler. He's not a beast. He's not, like, huge. 
And, you know, that's going to be his limitation. I don't see him as, like, the best tackle in the league. However, the most important thing for a quarterback to do is protect the quarterback, and that's what he does well. He has great technique, and the Seahawks really need tackles. I mean, that is why Russell Wilson got drove out of town because of that. I mean, it wasn't for lack of receiving help with DK Metcalf and Lockett, arguably the best receiving duo in the league, definitely up there anyway. So what they really need is tackles. They're not going to compete this year, so what they want to do is they want to build for their next quarterback. And, you know, that quarterback will hopefully have a good system to develop and learn. This could be Malik Willis, but I just don't think it's going to happen when you have a premier tackle available at nine. And they could also trade out of this slot. Uh, But I think if Charles Cross is still there, they will not. At 10, I have the Jets going wide receiver, Drake London, out of USC. Um, And do I think Drake London is the best wide receiver in this class? Maybe not. I'd probably, I might give that edge to Garrett Wilson just because of his versatility. However, Drake London, in only, like, with minimal games, got over a thousand yards. He was absolutely dominating college. He's 6'4, 6'5 in that range. And he's just so good at contested catches. You know, we have, we've seen guys like this, like J.J. Arcega, like Whiteside, not work out. However, I think he's a little different. You know, he had just such, his scale of dominance in college was just different. And, you know, I think his abilities are going to translate well to the next level. The Jets have some pieces. They have Corey Davis. They have Braxton Berrios. They have Jamison Crowder. They have some other guys. But none of them are guys that really command attention. You know, they're all weapons. They're all guys that you can do some stuff with. And Zach Wilson needs a guy who he can just sling the ball up to. He needs a guy that'll make the opponent have to double team him. He needs a guy like Drake London uh, out of USC. Next up at 11, I have the Commanders going Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, Ohio State. And I think it's obvious Garrett Wilson's the best player or best wide receiver available uh, still on the board. You know, playmaking ability, vertical, um, separation, speed, you know, 4-3-8. Uh, all that stuff makes him a great receiver. And he was number one at his school. Uh, and, you know, for me, this is about... The Washington Commanders need to support Carson Wentz, okay? Carson Wentz is not bad when he's playing within system, when he's playing with good guys, when he's playing with playmakers. And they also just need a, another wide receiver besides Terry McLaurin. They have Curtis Samuel. He hasn't done that much. Uh, they have, like, Diami Brown, I think. He's okay, but they need another guy, and I think that I uh, just think that DeGarrett Wilson is going to be that guy. Next up at 12, I have the Vikings going with Derek Stingley Jr., cornerback out of LSU. Now, to me, this is very obvious because they need a corner. Right now, their guy's Patrick Peterson. He's very old. He'll be a great mentor. Now, Stingley was an amazing cornerback in 2019. Since then, he's been injured a lot. You know, he's regressed a little bit. But if he can get anywhere near that form, he will be amazing. And he's got a lot of potential. Uh, And personally, I I think it's worth it once you're out of the top 10 with a guy like him. And he just fits their needs. He can develop under Patrick Peterson. And, you know, he's got a lot of potential and he's a good player. At 11, I have the Texans going with safety Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame. Now, they just lost a safety in Dustin Justin Reed. They don't play the same role, but they did just lose a safety. Uh, and he's going to be able to play that kind of strong safety role, possibly even linebacker. He's really good at covering tight ends, running backs. He's great against the run. He's pretty fast, and he's got great size for the position. And he doesn't have the range some people talk about, at least in my opinion. But I still think he's a very good player. And, you know, I think he's going to fit well. And I think he's going to go to the Texans here and be good there. Here, I have the Steelers making the first big move of the draft and trading up with the Ravens for the 14th pick uh, with their 20th and maybe a second rounder. And I have them acquiring Malik Willis, quarterback out of Liberty. Now, Malik Willis, you talk about potential. You talk about arm talent. You talk about running ability. He has it all. This guy has, like, kind of Patrick Mahomes kind of talent, but he's even less, like, you know, NFL-ready than Mahomes was. He, Malik Willis is going to need a year or maybe even two on the bench learning, getting ready. He is not ready to start right away, but Mike Tomlin said he wanted a mobile QB with who's like talented and whatever. Here's his guy. This is like the anti-Ben Roethlisberger, right? Very mobile, and he's very fast. He's a great runner. If he hits his potential, he will be amazing. And for now, he's going to be able to sit for maybe a year or so um, behind Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky is a fine option for a year. He's not great, but he'll work. And I just think this makes way too much sense. This is my trade that I think will happen in the actual draft. Next up at pick 15, I have the Eagles taking 
Trent McDuffie, cornerback out of Washington. Well, their history with corners from Washington may not be great. This one will be great. He may be a little small, little undersized, whatever. He's able to play through that. He's got great coverage. He's fast. He's quick. And he's just a great cover corner. He's very good in zones, especially. And if they want to play him at safety, they can do that. He's versatile. He's very low risk. And the Eagles need someone who'll be able to, um, like, succeed Darius Slay. Because Slay is getting pretty old. He's not going to be able to play there forever. And you can have someone like McDuffie develop under him a little bit, learn from him, and, you know, be another guy to help out that defense, help out the secondary that definitely needs some help. You know, they lost guys like Ronnie McLeod and, uh, you know, other guys. And I just think, I think Trent McDuffie is, you know, the best, probably the best player available. I think he just fits really well here. Next up, at pick 16, I have the Saints taking Jamison Williams, wide receiver, Alabama. Now, Jamison Williams is definitely the best player available here, uh, at least in my opinion. You know, he's very fast. He's a little bit small, but he should be able to avoid that with his shiftiness. He's the best deep threat in this class, and if it wasn't for injury, he might be the best receiver in this class. However, it seems like his rehab has been going well. He's clearly got crazy speed on tape, and the Saints need another a WR, too. A guy, like, kind of that can go on the outside or a guy with speed. You know, Michael Thomas is running short routes. Jamison Williams is running deep and stretching the defense. This is the best player available. It's a perfect position fit. This is their most needed position, and it just makes sense. Next up at pick 17, I have the Chargers taking Jordan Davis, um, DI, out of Georgia. This is obvious, okay? They have... Staley as their head coach, he ran this with the Rams. He's still running it with the Chargers, like the kind of three alignment, three down lineman. Uh, you know, Jordan Davis, probably the best player available. He's an absolute beast, physical athlete. Uh, and they don't need really need too many other positions. And there aren't any guys at those positions that they might need. This is just really easy pick. Next up at pick 18, I have the Eagles shocking everyone. And going with Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah. I mean, it seems like, you know, how when is Howie Roseman actually going to draft a linebacker in the first round? Well, I have this happening here because, again, yet again, I think they have the best player on the board available here, probably anyway. Uh, you know, he's a great linebacker. He can do just about anything. Run, stop, rush the passer, uh, drop back into coverage, cover tight ends, cover running backs. And it's the Eagles' arguably biggest position to need. Yes, they got Zamir White, uh, but I don't think that completely addresses it. And I think they need a guy that can kind of do everything everything and also help out with their pass rush a little bit so i have them taking devin lloyd out of utah here next up at 19 i have the new orleans saints taking trevor penning tackle northern iowa he's a very good run blocker according to pff he got a 99.9 which is like their highest grade ever uh but he was you know F fbs fcs whatever but he is still very good you know he's very physical athlete. Yeah, there are concerns, you know, how does he get moved even though he's so big? But I think he's going to be able to move past those. The Saints just lost to Ron Armstead. And while they have Ryan Ramchuk, they need a right tackle still, especially if they want to see if Jameis is the answer. Um, and, you know, they got Kamara, obviously. And I think once they got... Uh, Jamison Williams with their first pick, they're going to want to like, continue building that offense and really provide a good system. You know, they traded up with the Eagles to get um, another pick in the first round, and I think it's because they want to improve their offense, and Trevor Penning's the way they're going to do that. At pick 20, I have the Ravens going with Devonta Wyatt, DI out of Georgia. I think this was the guy they might have got originally at 14, so they get to get some draft value. They get to get some draft picks and move down um, and get the guy they wanted anyway. He's an explosive athlete, maybe not Jordan Davis caliber, but he is explosive. He's better rushing the passer, more technically the, the refined than Jordan Davis, so you like to see that. He does have some concerns um, regarding his age and some character stuff, but, you know, I think he's a very solid player overall, and I just think the Ravens, he's the really only position of need. At 21, I have the Patriots going with Andrew Booth Jr., cornerback out of Clemson. I think they really need cornerback. They just lost J.C. Jackson, and their offense relies on good defensive backs. And also, they got Devonta Parker in free agency, so I don't th think they need wide receiver. Um, some people have Andrew Booth as, like, their second cornerback. I don't, but I think he's good value. I think he's solid value here, and he's at their biggest position of need. So, there you go. Patriots take Andrew Booth Jr. At pick 22, I have the Packers taking Chris Olave, wide receiver, out of Ohio State. I think they obviously need a wide receiver, right? They have a big guy in Alan Lizard, Lizard, who is 6'5", 
and well they could definitely use a wr2 and that's what chris olave is good separation good catching stuff like that yep uh packers take chris olave wide receiver ohio state at pick 23 at the cardinals going zion johnson guard out of boston college he's a very good guard overall good power uh good feet good stuff like that good run blocking um and that's really the cardinals biggest position of need they got to help out kyler murray they do not need a center even though pff says they need a center and a lot of people having them taking tyler linderbaum their center is very good uh so zion johnson guard out of boston college here to the cardinals at pick d3 at pick 24 i have the cowboys going with tyler linderbaum their center last year wasn't that good and they love investing in their offensive line especially interior in the first round tyler linderbaum is super great he's the best prospect pffs is ever graded coming out of college at the center position so this just makes sense for me it's easy at pick 25, I have the Bills going with Bernard Ryman, tackle out of Central Michigan. Uh, you know, he may be a little old, but he has that speed from being a tight end convert. And, you know, he'll be very good. He's probably going to be a tackle, though it could even be at guard. And that's really the only position the Bills need. You know, Josh Allen was struggling behind there a little bit last year. Uh, and I think getting a tackle will sure things up and help out their team. Next up at pick 26, I have the Tennessee Titans taking Kenyon Green guard out of Texas A&M and continuing our offensive line run to four players in a row. He's a pretty good guard, you know. He didn't have great combine, but his tape is first round, so. And I think the Titans, you know, they lost Roger Saffold, and they need someone to help Derrick Henry run and to help Tannehill stay alive back there. So I, I just think this makes sense. You know, they don't really need any other position that bad, you know, obviously, unless they lose A.J. Brown, and they haven't lost him yet. So I'm going Kenyon Green guard out of Texas A&M. Next up at 27, I have the Buccaneers going with Daxton Hill. Safety probably uh, out of Michigan. And, you know, for me, it comes down to they don't really have a lot of needs. Maybe D DN, but they got someone who can pa rush the passer last year, and they had a pretty good pass rush last year. So I think they go safety. Their free safety is Logan Ryan, not optimal. So uh, fill that hole and get a little better. Next up, at pick 28, I have the Packers going with George Karloftis, edge out of Purdue. Um, they need a guy to help sharp their pass rusher a little bit, and George Karloftis is a super safe option. He's a great power rusher, got a lot of pressures in college, and I just think he's a good piece on a team like this that can that could use some more solid guys. I don't think he's going to be the best player in the league, but I don't think there's really any chance that he ends up being bad and gets released. Next up, at pick 29, the first of the Chiefs picks, I have them going Kyra Lamb, cornerback out of Florida. He's very physical, he's pretty solid in coverage, and he should translate well to the NFL. You know, he's a great press corner, and they lost Traverius Ward, and they really don't have any corners. And, you know, their defense without a guy like him uh, in the first round here could be pretty bad and might hold back their offense. So I have them taking uh, Kyra Lamb. With the 30th pick in the draft, I have the Chiefs taking Traylon Burks wide receiver, Arkansas. He's got a great blend of size and speed. He tested okay at the combine, and, you know, he's pretty versatile. Uh, he reminds me a little bit of, like, an A.J. Brown kind of guy. And they got Juju to be their slot. They got MVS to be their, like, outside deep threat. So they should have Traylon Burks play kind of the other role and possibly be their WR1. We'll see. At pick 31, I have the Bengals taking N'Kobe Dean. It's pretty simple. He's just kind of, kind of the best player available at a position they kind of need. I would have had them take corner if any of the top five corners uh, fell, but I don't feel comfortable taking Kyler Gordon or Roger McCurry in the first round. So I have the Bengals taking N'Kobe Dean. Finally, at pick 32, I have the Lions taking advantage of the fifth year option and taking Desmond Ritter, quarterback Cincinnati. He's a four year starter. He's a winner. He had the fastest 40 time of any quarterback. He's good at processing the field, and he's somewhat accurate and good under pressure. For me, I just see a guy with a pretty high floor, somewhat like Kenny Pickett. Worst case, and quite possibly he's a career backup, but he's going to stay in the league for a long time. And best case, maybe he develops into a top 10, 15 quarterback, and you know he can lead you somewhere. Again, he is a winner, and the Lions are going to take advantage of the fifth-year option uh, in the first round, and they're going to pick up Desmond Ritter, quarterback Cincinnati, I uh, hope you enjoyed the mock draft. If you did, press like and subscribe. I have the picture on the end screen here. Uh, I used clips from, like, highlights channels, so those will be uh, in the descriptions. Check those out if you like highlights. They're really cool. Uh, if you like any of these players, check those out. And if you want to see mock draft stuff, my favorite guy, the guy who kind of inspired me, uh, is Brett Coleman. So go ahead and check him out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you next time. Bye.